Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to show you how to convert in the CR10 into pick and place machine and also its pros and cons. Uh, but before that, I want to share that I have already created a website you can see in the screen. And I have shared the design there so you can go and download and print it out and try yourself. Okay, so let's get started. So I will start converting the CR10 into pick and place machine. So um, this is the fan case. Usually there are two fans on top of that. One is for the heat sink um, and then the other is for the uh, print, 3D print uh, cooling. And the heat sink one usually always on, so it's not controllable. And But then the uh, the side fan, which is for cooling the 3D print, this is um, uncontrollable from a G-code. So I have uh, what I have done is already I uh, cut the wire and then put in the connector here, you can see. And the other one, I also cut um, the wire. So this is to make it easier to remove the fan case. So I can just screw, unscrew the fan case. And then because it's, uh, you can see the wire uh, with the connector, so I can easily remove them. Um, yeah, so in that way you remove the fan case. And so you can see the screw hole here. So this is basically what the adapter I've made that will adapt um, exactly to the location. Um, so you can, you can see the, the distance. Basically, it's the, the distance. You, we need to know the distance to the top and the distance to the side. And the same for the uh, the other screw hole. And if we have that, we also need to know the the depths, the depths of um, of this uh, heat sink, and then also the um, the side, the the distance between this screw hole to the heat sink, so that we can make. Uh, adapter that is not uh, uh, blocked by the heat sink because I don't want to remove the heat sink because it will also take more effort to remove that and I also need the wire here therefore I just um, keep the heat sink here it will be also easier to mount the fan case back and this is the nozzle head I have made um, as you can see I have the stepper motor that can rotate and I also have the camera below and this is the adapter that I made specifically for adapting the um, uh, hot and bed screw hole so I can just mount it mount it in and then it will be um, connected to the uh, 3D printer so in that way it makes it very very handy just uh, mount one of that and then uh, for this because we have this uh, fan control later we can mount it just um, uh, to the air pump that makes it controllable so you can see i've put the air pump here and then with the tube and later this tube will be mounted into the nozzle head okay so now i have uh, put the screw in in a hole so i just need to mount it on top of the north uh, the hot and bed so it usually it's like uh, two screws to to mount. Um, at least that's the same also for the uh, for the any cubic um, as well. Okay, so now I just need to make sure it's tightened. Okay, so now you can see it's uh, actually mounted well. And then um, the other thing is. Um, then I just need to here I have the the stepper motor of the extruder. Um, then I just use that to mount it on top of the nozzle head. So yeah, now it's uh, it's good. The other thing is um, we have this uh, air pump. Uh, I just show here. That was the air pump, and I just need to um, mount the air pump to the. To the fan and that was the side fan actually um, to cool the um, 3d print and then the other thing is basically the tube you can see the tube and then we just need to put the tube into the into the nozzle um, just need to mount it in 
Okay, perfect. And then make sure the other plug doesn't get in the way. Okay, so now we have mounted the nozzle head. It's a um, yeah, pretty simple step to switch. When you want to switch back to 3D print, you just unscrew those two screws and then unplug those connectors. Then you put back the fan case. Then it become a 3D printer again. So, okay. And then the other thing is uh, I also make this component and this is basically for homing because um, with the component I provide this Lego style, it's a bit high. So therefore the, the homing distance uh, need to be adjusted. Um, therefore I made this a small component to make sure it doesn't go too low doesn't go too low to the uh, bed um, yeah and this is a very important step uh, just to make sure that you remember to put in this step every time um, because this um, if we if you don't have this it will try to go down and then it will actually crash the um, trying to put force on this uh, plastic parts they can break the plastic parts um, so yeah make sure you always put this component in Okay, so now it's uh, mounted. It's also easy and fast. So if the um, when it's going down, it will actually hit the um, position limit, and then it will stop. It will put it as a home, and yeah, which makes it also um, straightforward to limit. And usually, this is a very easy to create component. I will also share it out. Um, so. Is you can get it and you can also adjust the lens uh, by yourself but usually this lens should be okay uh, all right so that's basically it. and then the next step is I just need to remove this um, oh, this glass this glass plate this come with the and uh, CR10 so um, then I just need to put the plate, this is the base build plate I have into into this one. Um, I haven't print out the bigger one. Um, so I just uh, instead I just use this uh, reuse this one. but you can see it's also um, quite easy to put that in. just... Um, and because it's also smaller, so I just use tape to tape it for now, which works for me actually. Um, okay, so you can see now it's actually um, ready, and I can then start the um, uh, the pick and place machine. Uh, by the way, you can see also this printer it has a quite big space. It's like um, this is thirty centimeters. And this is the 22, it's a full as um, um, any cubic, the smaller one. So um, with this big one, if I can bring out the big one, I can actually um, use to put more components or maybe put, uh, let's say, bigger boards here. Right, okay, so now I'm gonna um, connect the USB. Usually you will need the USB, um, yeah, you will need a USB hub so that you can connect uh, uh, cameras. Okay, so I think I have. I need to pull in the nozzle tip here, and I also um, improve the nozzle tip. Um, so basically, this one has the. Let's say a smaller diameters in in the top, so it will be easier to to uh, mount into the head. Yeah, so the same as this one as well.
then I plug I plug in the USB plug into USB hub and sometimes to avoid the uh, um, the wires get in the way I just I just use uh, some some wire to um, tie this one. Okay, so now I I get a uh, yep. So now you can see it's um, it's actually nicely placed, and I can continue. Um, wait, just need to adjust a little bit here. Okay. So now this is this is done. Then I can start firing up the um, machine. Okay, so now I'm gonna plug in the cable. I'm plugging the USB cable and then I fire up the machine. Okay, so now you can see the machine is up, and then I need to fire up the um, the application of OpenPMP. Uh, okay, I didn't connect the USB cable here. Um, just need to connect the USB plug. Okay. All right, so now <clears throat> what I need to do is I just need to um, restart the PNP software. Okay, and then um, just need to set the... Just need to set the camera. It seems like bottom camera is not there. Um, just to Okay, now I got the camera. So I will first home the device. Um, as you can see, I just do the homing. And you probably notice the homing speed is really slow. Uh, the original CR10 come with a very aggressive uh, homing speed which is bump into the frame and then cause the component to be bouncing off. So um, with that I had to um, set the uh, customize the home command to make it move uh, slow um, in, to avoid bumping into the frame. And um, yeah, now you can see actually it's um, looking at the home in Fiducia and now it's uh, it's a probably honed. Um, the next thing is I need to um, let it calibrate the um, uh, board position, so it will. I will let it look at the fiducia of the board. It is it's, uh, recognizing the, the fiducia. Actually, this is the benefit of the top camera. But then after the uh, top fiducia, uh, after the fiducia location, we need to um, check if the position is good. And from here, we can see it's uh, pretty good. It's actually um, at the center. This one is a bit low, but I think um, it's still okay. And then we can also check on the chip to see if actually uh, if it's actually good. Yeah seems to be good and then the the next thing is um, we look at the feeder and um, this is the under number file which is the one that I use for testing um, then I bought a lot of uh, under null file so we can just um, so that I can just use for test because o201 component is a very um, hard to uh, 
take it and then put it back into the original place. Um, yeah, but now this at least the location seems to be good. The user location seems to be yeah to be good. Then um, I can also see if the location of the component, the, the, the one to pick, which is the next one, this one, um, is, is in the right location. So I can actually um, start a job, but then I need to select a couple of um, hundred hour far components just to, to let it place. And then um, before place, I just uh, uh, I want to let it calibrate the nozzle tip, and then after that I can um, yeah I can start a job. It will just automatically calibrate the nozzle tip, and then start placing. So now let's get started. So you can see now it's actually going to the um, calibration. Right, so now I start to um, look for the components and then you use the button camera to um, make the precise location and then place it onto the board. Yeah. So you can see this uh, the, um, the component is uh, being attached to the nozzle tip pretty well. Um, before I was using those needles and that actually gives uh, a lot of problem because it's actually um, quite easy to um, get lost. And then I had to design this uh, nozzle tip for it to um, easy to pick up the components. And right now, as you can see, this it actually gets the O201 component uh, pretty consistently as long as uh, we calibrate the, um, the feeder well and even, even if there is a, a, some uh, position offset of the feeder it can also use the top camera to do the compensation so which is really handy for um, the 3D printer because the 3D printer doesn't come with really high um, accuracies Okay, so now you can see it actually place uh, all those components. I just need to um, double check. So now you can see it's actually play, placed nicely onto the pad. Uh, this one as well, that's pretty good. Yeah, so this one as well. And this one, because the aligning already is a bit low, so you can see it's a, a bit lower side. But then when you do the um, reflow, if the, actually the, um, let's say soda paste, when it melt, it will actually pull the um, components back into the pad. So this is, uh, we, we will be good. And the same um, also for the other components. As a summary, it often come with the bigger build play, which means more component can be supported or bigger board can be mounted. On the other hand, it also come with a bigger X and Y movement vibration, which can cause the feeder's component to be bounced off or the component in the nozzle tip to be changed location or drop off. Um, so that means we need to customize the X and Y movement speed to make sure it can mount the uh, PCB smoothly. Um, these are the pros and cons uh, using the CR10. In all, it can still do the job, uh, but we need to carefully customize it to make sure it does the work well. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave in the comment. And if you like my video, please uh, like and subscribe. So see you next time.